Hello and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and and drink tea. I'm your host, Dr. Joseph Vandehai, and today we're in our fifth and final episode trying to understand what is math. To conclude this series, I want to talk a little bit about what a day in the life of a mathematician is like. And here I'm going to be focusing more on academic mathematicians than industry mathematicians, just because I kind of have more experience with that. But therein lies the rub. I said academic mathematician academy, school. Most mathematicians are teachers first and foremost. The amount of our day that's spent teaching can really vary from college to college. Some colleges have what we call a one-two teaching load, which means one course taught in one semester and two courses taught in the other. Other colleges might have a four-four teaching load, which means four courses taught in each semester. Now a one-two or a two-two teaching load is more common at a research-focused university, while three-three and four-four is more common at a teaching-focused university. I know some mathematicians who try and get research done on a 4-4 teaching load, but it's really hard because even during the summer they're often still playing catch-up. It's important to remember that the time spent in class is only a small portion of the time spent being a teacher. There's also prep work and writing homework assignments and grading homework assignments and writing quizzes and grading quizzes and writing tests and grading tests. There's also answering student emails, office hours, and so on. Prep work is easily the biggest variable when it comes to teaching time. I've taught Calc 1 and Calc 2 so many times by this point, I could probably lecture on them cold without doing any preparation whatsoever. On the other hand, I've taught a graduate course before that took so much time doing prep work, I basically didn't do anything else during the entire semester. Depending on the course in question, and the university in question, a teacher might be assigned a grader, which would cut down on the teaching workload as well. So depending on the mathematician in question, teaching can go anywhere from being almost all that we do being just a tiny portion of what we do. In addition to teaching, there's also the job of running the university itself. While universities have administrators, a lot of the decisions that affect a given department are often made by the members of that department. Professors work on committees that can choose anything from new hires to textbook choice to what courses should be taught during a given semester. Committee work is a vital part of managing a university. But that said, there's few things I've heard professors like to complain about doing more. There are also a variety of other administrative positions that a professor can take within a department. They could be chair of the department, head of undergraduate studies, or they could be responsible for teaching assignments, all of which takes a great deal of time. Now when it actually comes to doing mathematics, there's far more to it than just solving problems. For instance, we often referee papers, that is, we take part in the peer review process. We can review papers, which is actually a different thing. We also go to conferences, both to talk about our own work and to hear other people talk about theirs. I'd like to spend a bit of time each day keeping myself up to date on the state of my field. This might mean, for instance, reading a book, keeping myself refreshed on the underpinnings of the work. These are two of my favorites, by the way. Or I might visit Google Scholar or the Archive, that's A-R-X-I-V, to see what new papers are coming out. Or I might visit Math Overflow to see what sort of questions mathematicians are asking. This is important not only to help me expand my knowledge, but also to help me figure out what questions to ask. Some mathematicians have a clear goal they're working towards, so they constantly go back over their work, updating it and improving it bit by bit. Other mathematicians have more nebulous goals, and so there's not always an obvious next thing to work on. We have to spend time getting inspired by other mathematicians, by reading papers, by analyzing data, or sometimes just sitting down with a piece of paper and pencil until something falls out. Once we have a problem to work on, or at least one we think we can work on because we aren't always right, there's a lot of work that goes between conception to finished paper. First off, there's the research, which is looking up all the other papers that have been written on the same or similar problems. There's actually writing the proofs, which can easily take weeks or months, or in rare cases even years. There's sitting down to actually write the paper. Then there's rewriting the paper because the first version was completely unreadable. There's formatting a paper, so it could be submitted to a particular journal. There's getting referee reports back and having to make changes based on what they say. Then there's starting the whole process all over again. While writing the paper can take a while, I've found that most of my time is spent either researching previous works or trying to figure out the proofs. Finding the papers for research isn't as easy as it sounds. Even with modern tools like Google Scholars, things can be buried out in the literature. To give an example of this, I had a paper once I was about to send off to a publisher when, after a little bit more research, I realized that the result had already been done about 50 years ago in an obscure Russian journal. 
And once we have the papers, well, reading a math paper isn't like reading a novel. You can't just do it once and get it. You have to spend a long time studying the equations, figuring out not just how, but why they work. And then there's the whole business of actually figuring out the proofs. I like to joke that the best part of being a mathematician is making your own hours. And the worst part of being a mathematician is making your own hours. You see, most of the tools I need are right up here. And beyond that, maybe just a paper and pencil will do. Certain mathematicians make more use of computers than I do, but that's besides the point. So it's quite possible for me to get a lot of work done while I'm, say, eating lunch, or taking a shower, or trying to get to sleep, or taking a walk, or, well, even as some of my friends will attest to, while I'm in the middle of board game night. For my first major result, I was spending hours for weeks pacing my apartment back and forth trying to figure out how to do it. I was losing sleep every night because I would go to bed still thinking about the problem. I eventually gave up and decided, well, let me take a three-mile hike to the nearest movie theater and try and relax. Of course, then I ended up solving the problem halfway there, so I was spending the entire time at the movie theater and on the way back trying to repeat the idea in my head so I wouldn't forget it. The movie, by the way, was Inception. So a mathematician can really get work done just about anywhere and at any time, which is sometimes a bit of the problem. So over the course of a given day, a mathematician might be a teacher, an administrator, a reader, and a writer. The hours are very flexible, and different mathematicians have ways of keeping themselves productive. I know some professors who will come to the office early in the morning and stay until late at night because they're most productive at the office. I know some mathematicians who say they'll only work for an hour a day doing research because they tend to drop off in their productivity after that first hour. I hope this series has given you some insight into the way modern mathematics works. Next time on Math and Tea, we'll talk about something a little more fun. But that's all for now, because, um, hold on a second. Ah, because I'm out of tea. Bye!